Go ahead. So I see you got some strong one tomato soup. Well, I sweet mislabeled it. Actually. Oh yeah. Okay. It's uh, sweet woman tomato soup. Oh, there we go. Uh, but I'd labeled it strong. But mm. you're eating black-eyed Budweiser beans with brown rice and beets. So you have a B B B B. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's like bee. my last name, Bell. Someone's watching the show. Anyway. Anyway. So, uh, I'm going to re-review this. We Can Build You by Philip K. Dick. Now, this is not one of his famous ones. I think Man in the High Tower and the Android's Dream of Electric Sheep is maybe his two most famous titles. Mm -hmm. But this one, it took me a long time to read. Because it's not good. It's not that good. Yep. And um, yeah, so we're agreed on that. Mm -hmm. This one, I started yesterday morning, mm -hmm. and I finished it up before midnight. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's a longer book. But you were so, enjoying it more. Yeah, you bet. It's a longer book, maybe 50 pages longer roughly 50 pages longer and I just slammed through it. Guy was actually a good writer but the weird thing about this is this I think was published posthumously and it was one of ten that they were going which one do we publish and I'm going if they're all now this is the one that was picked but if they're all roughly the same level of excellence get them all out there if they haven't been put out there so uh, because uh, I, I mean He's actually laying character out for you and stuff like that. Uh, all of the characters, it's, it's kind of weird. It's, I won't... Uh, it, the, the actual part of the story, you know, the man with the, whose teeth were all exactly alike, that doesn't occur until halfway through the book. It's kind of weird. Yeah. So the skull that's uh, discovered. The skulls that are discovered. But uh, he's just kind of setting the characters out, you know, and they're kind of interesting. I don't think any of the major characters are very attractive and stuff like that. Maybe the guy who's the amateur archaeologist and grade four teacher, <laughs> maybe it's kind of like, but he's got his problems too, so, but, yeah. So the... Uh, the uh, Jewish fellow in there, he's got a problem with uh, blacks, you know, like when he uh, kind of gets mad at his neighbor for bringing a black home. The neighbor's got a problem with Jews, you know. Wow. But there's a lot of raci yeah. racial content. Yeah, a lot of, yeah. So this was published, what was it, 1984 or something like that? Mm -hmm. Let's check and see. 1984, how's that for my memory uh, sticking? But it is set in 1958, and I think that might have been roughly when it was written. So uh, it was just something that he never got around to publishing, or the publishing industry never was interested in that. publishing, or what if that's a big jump in time? What is that, 26 years? Almost a generation. Anyway, here's the deal it's the usual deal. For something that gets a positive review don't waste money on it but you might find it in your library if you don't find it in your library it's probably worth getting inter on inter library loan that they still have those kind of programs in the kind of austerity that we're going to be facing now don't let your governments fool you uh, at least here in canada the per capita debt is significantly lower than it was in the 90s now we kind of got out of that mess. We never entirely got out of it, but it is possible to uh, handle it. I gather that after World War II, the per capita debt was even higher in the United States, maybe in Canada too, than it was in the 90s. And I've heard one person report that uh, they really didn't have that paid off until the 70s. 
I, uh, the British debt was amazing. British debt to uh, the United States. I don't know if they really got out of it until this millennium. Well, and I think, you know, Canada should be looking for reparations in the future. Oh, the whole world, the whole world should, should be. be looking for reparations from who? Just, you know, like uh, Donald Trump's pulled the plug on him. Don't pull the plug on them. Just sue the socks off of them, and uh, that'll get rid of them. Yeah, because they cannot be allowed to do this again. No. And uh, you know, like uh, people are saying, but what, what, what would we replace them with? You don't replace organizations that are responsible. They're co-responsible for uh, so far a half a million people around the world dying. That's that is mass killing mass killing by negligence and the part of the who I'm not so sure about China I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt Pauline isn't and I can't argue their, well, their behavior I'm, looks so it's looking very uh, suspicious now yeah, like I said yeah. Worse earlier than suspicious it just looks obvious as though James was wanting to um, be more conclusive about who was responsible and I was like well you know it's possible that it's not and I, other people I was hearing right away they were like it's China you know and it's like well it was seen there first but it doesn't somebody could have put it there or whatever right like it doesn't necessarily mean that they are responsible but now given their the how the People's Republic of China how they're um, how they've proceeded since this yeah. it's looking very suspicious yeah, throwing it's, their weight around yeah they, I mean if, if I had nothing to do with it personally if I were a, con a world leader or something that had nothing to do with it then there's no way that I would then decide oh I'm gonna do what I'm doing to Hong Kong and then you know they're fighting India I the mean, things that they're doing it's making it look suspicious you know they're at the least they're taking advantage of um, the situation yeah. but I it's not looking good for them. following up on the so, terrorist kid and it's terrorism mm -hmm. terrorist kidnapping of what looked to be innocent Canadians so I mean if it turns out that um, nobody else is found to be responsible then I mean China's obviously responsible anyhow for fighting it and this and that. I so, need it for at least a and month. And for um, encouraging people to keep their borders open and this well, and that. For, not just I mean, encouraging, that was ridiculous. whining and crying. That's racism! Yeah, so they're responsible at least for that. If, I, if it ends up that we're then having to suffer from not only this but swine flu on top of this and we have to um, be preemptive about uh, diseases like this in the future we can't have pandemics this can never like this, happen this can again. never happen again so um, An example has we to have said. to we have to look at it seriously and treat it very seriously or it'll just keep happening mm. it'll just it'll be like well, um, this one and this one, pandemic of this year, and then the pandemic of next year, and then you have you still have that other one to deal with, and it's like, we okay, got a second wave. so how um, how can you possibly get on top of it? I mean, there's there there's a lot that people can do um, just from their homes now. There's a lot of work that people can do through the internet, but then it's like, no. well, the internet is so very open to everyone that um, that can be a concern too right uh, about what because it's not we don't have one world one people with one dream and and motivation for what the world should be like the perfect there's no one perfect Eden for everybody right now and it's worse some maybe than it was some in people's the 19th Edens century are really really awful like mm. they're like hell mm -hmm. for other the vast people majority so of the people in the world. um 
it's uh anyway anyway i don't really feel like talking about this uh do how you about have anything any? you heard on the cbc today well i didn't hear anything of value on the cbc which i mean that's interesting in itself that we heard uh an interview on the way to hiking and back uh, well back from the interview mm -hmm. we heard the uh or back from the hiking we heard the interview yeah. about the some girl had been murdered and this and that and whatever and the interview goes on for ages this was a 20 year old case and more than 20 yeah. the interviewer is really just exploiting i mean journalists that's usually what they do they mm -hmm. <laughs> exploit some other people's work uh but in this case it's the other people's work you don't want to i mean it's not like you want to claim to be a murderer or anything but it's um they're exploding other people's misery yeah and um anyway so this this woman was like a failed fiction writer and was it was god awful listening to her mm. just god awful mm. she was not providing uh, enough detail so like i'm trying to follow along what what's happening like um, James, when he's talking to people, like say we haven't went out to the mountains because we haven't felt safe yet, but um, and we might not. Some of the past, are quite but terrible. in in yeah, but um, we'll see what we can do. But in the past, when we've went up to the mountains, we often run across from people from all over the place. It's actually more common for us to run across people from germany than it is from calgary or something it's yeah. kind of ridiculous mm. but so james will be talking to them and and he'll he'll say um he'll try to sometimes he'll try to pick out an accent or something and he'll be like are you from such and such and then he's like don't tell me are you near the river such and such and he'll he'll narrow it down where they're from and they're just in awe because he knows the whole map of where they're from right and um but anyway this woman that was um in talking on the radio she was it was a podcast and so it was like a pre-recorded thing and it was just awful and um she was talking about some river that the body had been buried or found Small here rivers, and whatever. Yeah. And she didn't even have the name of the river. And it's like, okay, well, that's useless. You know, like she has, she doesn't have enough details to draw the person in to picture things. Instead, she's providing really stupid details. Yeah. Like, um, they had a stained glass window with a parrot on it. And, um... The police officer collects wine. He likes collecting wine. And they're talking about this for a while. And it's like, no. why? Who gives a fool? Why? That has nothing to do with the story. That might have something to do with another story. But not this one. Man. Just garbage. I just... It's shocking how many people get jobs. Like, she's paid to do this junk. And this is what she's getting out? Our coin. Well, I guess so, event. because she was on the CBC at this point, so, ugh. God. Just dreadful. Just dreadful. Because mm -hmm. it, it's important where this uh, body was found. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, like Pauline was saying, how did it get there? You know, like. Well, I was saying, I mean, it's a really... What kind of um, murderer would plant a body right at the bank of a river? Mm. I, unless they want it to be found, mm -hmm. right? And, and that, in it that's a bit of a clue as to what the killer is like just from that either they're this is their only only time they've murdered so this is not a serial killer or something because wow that's stupid or they actually want the body to be found so you this really should help narrow down who the killer is right mm -hmm. just that because I mean, you really have to be a moron to put a body at a riverbank. I think so. Uh, right. You know, like what I said was... Um, Honestly. And it wasn't it, buried even very deep because he had, no. like, the, he, I guess there was a log or moved or, or coyotes. Like the coyotes, yeah. But had dug the thing up. So, I mean, he put a log over it, so here, that'll weigh it down. Yeah. 
I don't it looks as though Bozo anywhere. did the killing during the daytime, which is would have limited the amount of burial time, huh? According oh, to the police yeah. sort of thing. So yeah. he was probably trying to do it fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Given the well, that's if it's the guy that they were thinking, which it, it looked looks like a guy that I mean, I kind of expect when they're doing these cold case things that there's some mystery involved. This is like the uh, bozo who killed uh, his former wife or girlfriend who'd gone over and started ditched him and started dating an RCMP guy or something like that. And the police don't necessarily railroad people. In that situation, you know they would have loved to railroad them. Called one, you know, like the girlfriend of one of their own. Mm. And I'm pretty sure it's still a cold case. And that might have been in the 80s when mm -hmm. it happened, early 80s. Wow. So it's like 40 years. Mm. Now the cops keep open, reopening the case. Mm. At one time, there was a very dry summer. And they said, we're going to be checking a particular reservoir where we figured yeah. a, a weapon. I don't think they even specified the kind of weapon they were looking for. It would have been a rifle, I suspect. Yeah. Well, that's how the woman was killed. So they would have known. Nothing panned out. Too bad. Yeah. You know, I'm the kind of guy, when I hear something like this, I say, how was person real? But, you know, what happened was they were saying, this girl had oh, been attracted with us. Usually the police know. Usually they have a pretty good idea. People aren't railroaded. That's the sad thing. That's, yeah. yeah like, because I tend to be that way too. I yeah. tend to want to say, oh, you know, um, police, aggressive people in yeah. there, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. But, well, they they know their job. They're they hired know. for for a reason, and uh, they they tend to be able to perform their job quite well. So, oftentimes, they know. They run into problems with serial killers, because there's no motive. Right? And, uh, you know, like anyone who kills anyone for some sort of motive, mm -hmm. they tend to be a relative or a friend or something like that. The cops, it's, it's just like, who killed A, B, C, D? You know, there are not that many yeah. sorts of alternatives. And some mm -hmm. of these idiots, I didn't say these people, these idiots, these kind of killers, they'll be going around saying, so-and-so should be murdered. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then the person ends up dead. Yeah, yeah. It's well, like, oh, okay. Surprise. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Okay. But, and they're going no, around I shouldn't I laugh. didn't have nothing to do with it. Well, I know. Mm-hmm. It's sad. But yeah, oftentimes, are that stupid. yeah. But yeah, oftentimes the police that are after people and they're. I mean, you want to. You, like James said, he used to watch cops with his dad and stuff like that um, sometimes. Cause his dad I've actually that. watched cops with the cops. Oh, you have. But mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah, um, they like watching cops. Mm -hmm. But a lot Outtakes, of the time... Like, really gruesome. Oh, okay. okay. Well, a lot of the time, if you're watching it, you think, oh, this the police are wrong, this guy's innocent, or whatever, and it's like, you watch enough of it, and no, no, the, the guys usually... Almost every they're time not they get the right innocent. person. And... I mean, there's some gruesome miscarriage of justice, like David, yeah. David Milgard. He was a... He'd been convicted of some crimes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I think they were petty crimes. I mean, there was a time. I'm in a bad neighborhood. And mm -hmm. when I started with James, he'd leave the door open at night to try to cool off the house and stuff like that. And I'd tell him, you close that door. I don't mm -hmm. want the door open at night. Mm -hmm. And, well, he wouldn't listen. And the door was open. And one time there was, he was downstairs. No. And the doors uh, for my house both, were wide open. Both front doors were open. And open. so a police officer came. I was sleeping in the bedroom right near the door. And there was a police officer with a dog. And, and I was dog. terrified. He was calling in. I'm half asleep and I'm holding my little dog. He was standing in the porch. And I don't think he had a 
legal right to be there. I don't care if the doors were open. I don't no. Know. Well, See, any, anyway. He um, was such an idiot. He, I he should have the dog filed and, a complaint. And uh, he was... He was saying he was going to let the dog in or whatever. He was asking if there was anyone in and this and that. And I was scared, so I couldn't talk because so I'm I was in a scared kind of person. Not really. And I'm holding brief my little dog. Underwears, but you know, but they were brief underwear. But then you were talking to him, so that worked out okay. But still, initially I mean, it didn't. I'd come from upstairs. Someone should be able to tell when someone's sleeping. And I'm in only brief underwears. Not, not brief, brief underwears. So I was like uh, a whole room and maybe a half away from it. And that's a mm -hmm. big living room that Pauline has, small yeah. house. And he said, don't take a step closer. <laughs> what? You know, like, where am I going to hide something? Like, I'm going to take on him and a dog. Obviously yeah, not lugging a weapon. Take on the dog. Nobody yeah. wants to take on the dog. Not a police dog. No way. No. But Here's the thing, you know, like I, I was work... scared for my the life of my little dog because mm. I didn't know if he was going to go after that dog and then no. get eaten. Yeah, you know? I should have. Well, but got Pauline to fire it. No, he on. shouldn't have fired a com filed a complaint. He should have shut my door. I shouldn't. Yeah. I told him to shut my door repeatedly, and he wouldn't listen. It's my house. My house. I should be able to say. So anyway, but a lot in that case, the police officer he didn't, you know, he was, was thinking that James was a criminal and whatever, and <laughs> invaded my house because he had my doors open. But like I'm um, going around the neighborhood. In his they underwear. got uh, some but a person. Honestly, a lot of the I'm time. Going around neighborhood in my briefs. They wow. they know the people that they're dealing with. Like many people in my neighborhood. They're probably right to think that if the doors are open, there's someone. They're probably right to think, oh, somebody broke in and da da da, or whatever. But um, and but I don't know. A lot of the time, I think if the police are messing somebody up, because sometimes they will, because they're aggressive. There's there the people they're messing up are probably not good people. If you start digging around information about them, you won't find too many heroes in in that crowd. So, the, about the only issue you can make, like, is if, if they kill someone, um, the person didn't deserve to be killed. Yeah. But, At least um, not then. Who knows what they'd maybe, be capable Yeah, maybe of. later. But, like, uh, you know, there's uh, there's one case I know about. It was a while back where uh, the person was uh, killed by police and um, had a record of holding up a woman for money with a gun, like pointing it at her gut or something like that. Mm -hmm. the woman, he didn't deserve, you know, he could have ended up, like if that woman had startled or something mm -hmm. like that, uh, she could have ended up dead, you know, like, uh, that, this person is an awful person. And I'm using this person in this case. Yeah. This is a while back. Uh, in, uh, Pejorative, Pejorative status. 